This is the plaintiff, Robert Henry Demers. He says he runs an employment agency that matches teachers with educators, and the defendant contracted with him in 2011. The defendant got hired, but never paid him the service fee for placing her. The defendant's playing games with him, he's trying to duck out on paying his fee, and he's suing for the $3,000 he's due. This is the defendant, Katherine Richards. She says she did inquire about the plaintiff's services when she was looking for a job, but also sent her resume out to many, many schools and was hired by one of them. She found this position on her own. The plaintiff didn't find the job for her, and that's why she doesn't owe him any of her hard-earned dough. She's accused of an F in finance. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant hired him to find her a job, places teachers with educators. She got hired, but he never got paid. The defendant says she got the job on her own. It's the case of, I'm going before. to teach you a lesson. Thank you, Douglas. You're okay, in. Robert Henry Demers, yes, doing business as teacher placement services. You're suing Katherine Richards for $3,000 in job recruitment fees that you say she owes you because she ended up getting a job at a place that you had referred her to. Tell me what happened here. Well, what kind of business do you run? We're an employment agency. We find jobs for educators throughout the state of New York. And uh, how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been doing it since the year 2000. Okay. And for has your years. company been incorporated that long or you were doing it for somebody we're else? We're a partnership uh, with my wife, Robin. Here we're uh, married and partners, business okay. partners. Oh. <laughs> well, I shouldn't make that face and maybe it's going swimmingly. Sheesh. So you're just never apart ever. Right. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. OK. Um, so you, uh, so the business has actually been in effect since 2000. Yes. Okay. She's been doing it since 1986. OK. All right. Now, when did you first meet Catherine Richards? I've never met her. OK. How did you get her resume? Uh, well, I didn't do that either. That's why I'm not sure. Uh, Robin is the Come one on that up. was working at the time. So talk to me. Miss Richards applied with um, us online. We uh, place people throughout the state of New York. She actually applied with us uh, the 11th of September, okay. 2011. Okay. And uh, at that time, we contacted her once we received her application. Um, we go over the contract, make sure she understands the contract. It's been approved by the Department of Labor in New York and find out what her preferences were. We do that with all our clients. Where, what kind of job does she want? Where so you, she did want? you talk to her yourself? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. Yep. And you then took her application and sent it where? Actually, after uh, I interviewed her on the phone, we uh, asked her for her resume and cover letter. She emailed it to us. And then we received a position from a school in Manhattan that looked like it would be fit all her preferences and she was well qualified for. I contacted her about that position November 7th, 2011. Um, okay, now before you contact her about a position, is there a contract that she signs? Yes. Okay, do you have that with you? Bob has and it. how does she sign it? You send it to her electronically, she signs it, scans it, sends it back? Uh, uh, she agrees to it when she makes the application, which we have the application in so the contract. So she clicks agree? How does it work mechanically? It, it says, I have read, understand, and agree to the terms of the contract. I understand that the submission of this form verifies my agreement. Let me see. And with it uh, is the contract. Okay. All right, so go on. Okay. So we received after um, I talked to her initially and to learn about her preferences and um, make sure she understood she had signed a contract because some people say they don't understand that. After we had that discussion, I asked her for a resume and cover letter. She emailed those items to us. After we received those, then I contacted her in September 14th, 2011 and told her about a position that was available in Manhattan. Asked her if she was interested, if she had applied to the school before, because if she's applied to the school, then we let them work it out on their own. It's in the contract for them to do that. And she said she was very interested. She was very interested in the school. What next? I said, I'll send your resume to my contact, the administrator at the school, and see if we can get you an interview. So I did, uh, with her permission, and she did get an interview. Uh, then, after I didn't hear anything for a while, I contacted her. Uh, she didn't get hired for that job though, right? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> that's correct. And I contacted her when uh, I didn't hear anything and she- uh, how, long, how much later? November 7th, 2011. 
2011. So that's how much later? Two months. Okay. Two months. So it's, it's a long process to get hired as a teacher in some of these schools. And uh, she said, well, you know what? I went to the website after, after she had the interview. She went to the website and she learned about another position she was more interested in. And she had gone through the interview process and was getting ready to do a demo, a demonstration for the school. How does a demo work? It's you go into a school, uh, into the school where you're potentially going to be employed. And it's a classroom of students who are in attendance at the school. You prepare a lesson and you conduct a lesson before the administrators of the school. Do they videotape it or are they physically there? It depends on the school. There are some teacher, there are some schools where the administrator is there and videotapes it and some where the administrators are just there. Do you find the kids are cooperative or are they busting your chops? Um, well, because they it, obviously know you're a newbie. It really depends. In this <laughs> case, the students were they were excited about getting a new teacher because it had been so many months what grade and is I would this? have been their third teacher. <laughs> it was seven. It, I did the demo lesson for an eighth grade class, but I ended up teaching seventh and eighth okay, grade. Okay. Now, were these kids special needs? Yes. Okay. Now, you end up getting a job mm -hmm. from the school that they had referred you to. Mm -hmm. And at some point, she calls you and she tells you, by the way, you owe us some money. Mm -hmm. And what did you say to her? I, well, she didn't tell me over the phone that I owed her money. What happened is she called me to ask me how was my job search going. And I said to her, well, I got a phone call. I sent my resume out and I got a phone call and had interviewed with Opportunity Charter School in Harlem. And she says, well, that's the school that we sent your resume to. I Did said, you know the school she had sent your resume she to? She sent my resume. She said she was sending my resume to a charter school in Manhattan for a sixth grade learning. The title was sixth grade learning specialist. Right. The position. Do you that, dispute whether she originally sent that resume to the school or you have since researched well, it and you know she I did? I researched it and I know she did. You know she did. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I do have um, a statement from the hiring coordinator at the school stating that they did receive my resume from teacher placement services, but I was not considered as a candidate for that position. And that was back in September and that she didn't. Um, consider me as a candidate until I responded to another ad that they had <clears throat> online for a science teacher. For okay, seventh and, and eighth I, grade I understand that. Let's assume that that's 100% true. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I saw that there was an email that you submitted from uh, the hiring person mm -hmm. saying just that, mm -hmm. that they don't know whatever came in the first thing, that person didn't look at it and that they just hired you. Whatever. Let's assume that to be factually correct. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at the contract that you agreed to? Honestly, and like mm -hmm. I said before, like as she was speaking, Judging by your no, smile, the answer is no. I, but no, you wait, know what it no, is. it's no, not then, but yes, before I walked in. It's my own fault because you should never, one, assume anything, and two, just, you know, yeah, I was looking for a job. I'm clicking. Sure, I it sounds a like a position. great idea when it because I it X percent of zero is yeah. zero, but X percent of something, yeah. it then becomes yeah. something, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the contract says that if the plaintiff makes the initial contact, he gets a commission. Does he get paid here? I think he does. He provided the initial inroad into that school. But she's saying, look, I got a job independent of that, a totally different job. Is that a defense to not paying for the commission? If he has a contract, he should get paid. Period. Yes. Period. Going inside the courtroom. So when you're looking for a job, you're you're ready to pay a commission. And then when you when you have a job, you're like, wait, did you really help me get there? Well, honestly, I wasn't looking to pay a commission because my experiences have always been that a job <clears throat> agency is contracted or hired through the potential employer. Okay, have you ever, do you, do you, do you own your own home? Yes, I do. do. Have you ever sold a home? No. Okay, um, if you were to hire a realtor to sell your home, part of that contract is gonna read just like this, that if you sell the home at all, whether you're the person who did the hustling or they're the person who did the hustling, if you sell the home during the representation period, you're gonna be paying them a commission because it's their sale. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I might not sign this. I might not agree to this. I mm -hmm. might not have hired them with these. I don't know what the industry's like. Maybe everybody has that same requirement, but clearly in reading this, and you, you're a teacher, you've read this. Yes. Uh, you know, you've, you've read this, right? <laughs> so you've read this before walking in here, well, so you had to know well, it wasn't Well, yeah, because when I got good. their paperwork from <clears throat> saying that they were suing me in their the, the paperwork that I got from the court, right. they had like a little section in their paperwork that they submitted to the so court. So you since read it, right? Yes. And you know that it says that they will be considered to have been instrumental if 
uh, you get hired by anybody they sent your resume to. Yeah, within 12 months, which I right. find that also to be unfair because I'm supposed to send them my resume and wait okay. for them to, you know, <clears throat> you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So I continued sending my resume out everywhere trying to find a job. Okay, but your brain cells are quite connected and you know exactly how this is going to go mm -hmm. and you're not going to say it's unfair in that hallway, are you? No, but- Because it's gonna, what you signed, it's what you agreed to, to. I'm also going to give you a copy of my pay stub to prove that they do not- That they have overestimated yes. your, your salary. Yes. How much do you make? Well, I'm not even at that school anymore. <laughs> what happened? I, I'm, I'm actually closer to home because I live on Long Island. So trekking it into Harlem was a bit much. So I'm working in Queens now. Okay. Yes. You're happy though. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is your pay over a two week period? Yes. Okay. According to your contract, it's 60% of one month's salary, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So that comes out to $2,808.93. And therefore, I find in favor of the plaintiffs in the amount of the $2,808.93, plus, of course, your court cost. Thank you. Okay, Thank good you. luck. Let's talk to the defendant coming out of the courtroom here. You lose this case, but they didn't get every penny they sued for. You knew you were going to lose this case before you walked in? After I received their paperwork, I realized that it was my own fault that I didn't read before I checked, you know, looking for a job. You think oh, this looks like something I would be interested in doing. Let me just fill out the application and go. But, and you read you know, it. And, you, and so they're entitled to their fee. No, they're not entitled to their fee because they didn't find me the job. I had evidence that from the hiring well, coordinator. According to the contract, they're to entitled me. to their fee. Yeah. So. so do these services uh, work for teachers looking for jobs? No, I'd say send your resume out to as many schools as okay. you can on your own. All right. Yeah. Okay, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Okay, then come on in here and satisfied how this comes out? Yes, sir, I am. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the service you provide. Well, if you do what Ms. Richards says, you're not going to get a job. Uh, as much as if you went through a service where we have direct contacts with the schools and the principals and we have inside information. You don't think a teacher can go out there and find a job they on can. their own? They can. The market is tough for teachers. There are like thousands of applications for every position there are. It's there the is. same for everything. Yes, it is. Harvey? You know, I want to spend just a couple of seconds telling you this. A lot of times, you know, you make a deal and somebody hands you this big contract and you look at it and you just sign it because you don't want to read it. These are not just words. They mean something. It's all about your rights. And usually when somebody hands you a contract, it's protecting them more than it is you. You've got to read these contracts. It's a pain in the neck, I know. But I'm telling you, in the end, you will be so much better served.